What's good everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another big Nintendo Switch news video and more. Today, we've got a bunch of great topics for you guys. And of course, the big show E3. I'm gonna be breaking down the events and what I'm gonna be streaming on this channel. But before we get into any of this, please make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe if you're someone new. If you want up-to-date coverage on all things E3, Nintendo, RPGs, action games, and more. And I do appreciate all of the love and support you guys do show on the channel. So thank you so much for that. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into this here, guys. We got the E3 2021 official broadcast schedule. A lot of you guys have been asking me about what shows are you going to be streaming? What's going on? What are the times? What are the dates? What's everything going on? So to make this as simple as possible, I'm going to ask you guys to please understand what Pacific time is. So that is West Coast, California over here on this side. I live there. So all of these dates and times are going to be based off of California time where E3 is usually scheduled los angeles where people go in there so just keep that in mind and make sure you appropriately adjust to where you live in the world so if you're overseas i'll have a time converter for you guys you guys can go there plug in any time any date and everything and it'll pop up where you live so that's going to make this very easy for me to go through and very easy for you guys to track along no matter where you are in the world because we have a lot of international users and of course people that are in different time zones that i I am in so let's go ahead and jump into this here guys the official e3 2021 broadcast schedule june 12th through june 15th now below is a comprehensive e3 2021 broadcast schedule in addition to what's listed there'll be a wide variety of interviews panels and other exciting moments that you won't want to miss make sure you tune in for the whole broadcast to catch all the reveals and surprises now all times pacific they say that on here i'm gonna go ahead and echo that once again saturday june 12th 10 a.m broadcast pre-show 11 a.m ubisoft forward pre-show 12 p.m ubisoft forward 2 p.m gearbox e3 showcase and 2 45 p.m games beat session so i thought about this and i've been thinking very hard about the ubisoft board pre-show and unfortunately ubisoft is not giving us their word that there isn't going to be any problems with dmcas or strikes or takedowns because in the past i've had multiple issues with them so i don't think i'm going to stream the ubisoft forward however i might be streaming during that time period and if everything seems to be okay or if there's something that's kind of hype that gets announced we can talk about it so we'll have like a live discussion maybe as it's going on i'm not a hundred percent sure how i'm going to cover it so just make sure you have your notification bell activated and you hit the subscribe button and all that good stuff and just stay up to date on if i do go live with something there but we will be just live in general talking about different stuff and if there's anything from some of these other shows i'll talk about it as well next up i think things get very interesting here i am for sure streaming multiple events on sunday june 13th so 8 45 a.m broadcast pre-show 9 30 a.m the 24 entertainment naraka blade point 10 a.m xbox and bethesda game showcase i will be streaming this event 100 percent so we're going to be going live a few hours before or a couple hours before so i will be live from the morning all the way through then at 12 15 p.m it's square enix so back to back i'll be streaming both of those after that at 2 p.m it's warner bros games back for blood which i won't be streaming but i might still be live then 2 30 p.m pc gaming show will not be streaming that and then at 4 p.m future game show will not be streaming that so you have two guaranteed ones here with the xbox and bethesda game showcase and the square enix games showcase as well now next up is monday june 14th got a big slate of stuff here won't be streaming a lot of it but there's still a lot to look forward to broadcast pre-show verizon is at 9 a.m well the broadcast pre-show is at 8 a.m verizon's at 9 a.m 9 45 a.m is in television 10 15 a.m is take two interactive panel 11 10 a.m is mythical games 12 p.m is indie showcase i might stream that not 100 percent sure but i might stream that 12 30 p.m is freedom games 1 p.m is ven 
2.30 p.m. is Capcom, so I will 100% be streaming Capcom's event. That should be pretty big. They talked about it. They're going to have Ace Attorney. They're going to have Resident Evil stuff. They're going to have Monster Hunter stuff, so it should be pretty good. So I will be streaming that, so look forward to my live there. And then at 3 p.m. is Razer. I have no idea what that is, but maybe I think they make like the computer stuff, so we'll see what happens with that, but I don't think I'm going to be streaming it. Now, this is the big show. This is Tuesday, June 15th. This is when it goes down because at 8 a.m. you have the broadcast pre-show. At 9 a.m. you have Nintendo's Nintendo Direct and Nintendo Treehouse Live. I will be streaming that. I'll be going live very early, hours beforehand. So make sure you guys catch the show and make sure you tune in to my pre-show because we might be giving away a few things here or there. So make sure you just tune in for that. I think you guys are going to like this one. So yes, I'm streaming that. 1 million percent i mean obviously it's nintendo's big show so we're definitely going to be streaming that after that at 2 25 p.m you have bandai namco entertainment inc which i will be streaming that as well at 3 30 p.m you have eureka studio i have no idea what that is at 3 35 p.m you have GameSpot play for all showcase won't be streaming that and then at 4 45 p.m you have the official e3 2021 award show and i would stream that if they actually included more outlets but the outlets that they're including in order to give the awards is way too small and i don't know who the panel is going to be for all of them so i'm not going to be streaming that and honestly i don't really care about that at all overall it's going to be a pretty big e3 it's going to be a lot of fun i have a lot of shows that i'm going to be streaming and i'm looking forward to bringing you guys the best e3 live streaming and edited content as well because after i'm done streaming there will be videos on games that i think that are hype there will be videos on what nintendo's announced there'll be videos on other things if i didn't stream a show but there was something announced there'll be videos on that so i'm very excited to get into all of the e3 content and if you've been on the channel before if you've been here for two plus years last time that we had e3 e3 2019 i made multiple videos on that e3 2018 e3 2017 i've been covering e3 since i think 2012 when i officially first started covering e3 like in depth so it's been a while i mean it's been a minute and i'm looking forward to covering more e3 here in 2021 so what are your thoughts on the e3 broadcast schedule and my plans as well let me know in the comment section below all right and moving on to the next topic here guys we've got an update on overwatch yes overwatch will be implementing cross play across the nintendo switch PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. This is something that I think a lot of gamers are going to be very happy to see considering how big the Overwatch community is and how many people play on different systems. Now you can play with anybody that you want to on the systems here. So Overwatch will soon implement crossplay, allowing users to team up regardless of their preferred platform, developer Blizzard Entertainment announced. With the release of crossplay, all players will need to create a battle.net account to link their console accounts. Additionally, everyone who logs into Overwatch by the end of 2021 will receive a golden loot box to celebrate. Shout outs to loot boxes. Crossplay will launch in the beta phase. The Overwatch development team will be monitoring feedback and look to make improvements on the feature moving forward. Now you can get the full rundown when it comes to frequently asked questions. Link in the description, I'll have that for you guys. And of course, Overwatch is now available for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and also PC. Overwatch 2 is coming out sometime, maybe at the end of this year, next year, whatever. I mean, Overwatch 2 is in development. They're going to be doing that, and it's going to seamlessly integrate with Overwatch 1, apparently. So I'm guessing Overwatch 2 will also have that crossplay in there as well. And Overwatch has blown up to be one of the biggest esports, one of the biggest competitive games in the world. I used to play it back in the day. I played a little bit on Switch, played it on Xbox, played it on PlayStation. I think Overwatch is great. It's just not a game for me personally, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with overwatch 2 because that's supposed to have some type of like uh co-op mission modes that you can play which i felt they should have had that from the very beginning with overwatch 1 there should have been some story based co-op mission modes in there and i don't know why they didn't do that from day one in my opinion and probably because they have to balance the gameplay esports and all that so i, I get it i don't think it was a very easy thing to make this type of game but at the same time i still feel that like co-op multiplayer story type of stuff should have been something in there with this colorful cast of characters why not not. so i'm looking forward more to overwatch 2 but then that'll be good if they implement cross play in that one as well because then people can just jump right in no matter what platform that they have so it's good stuff all around so what are your thoughts 
on Overwatch implementing crossplay. You guys gonna try this out on any system here? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the final topic here, guys. Monarch, the new RPG from former Shin Megami Tensei developers is confirmed for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, and even seems like PC here. And on top of that, we have an English localization confirmed as well debut trailer so we can see the footage of this game new details and screenshots there's a bunch of good stuff from this update so publisher you and developer Landcars have released the debut trailer information and screenshots for newly announced rpg monarch additionally publisher clouded leopard entertainment confirmed it will release the game with japanese traditional chinese simplified chinese and korean subtitle support in asia day and date with the game's Japanese release on October 14th. It has also been confirmed that both English voiceovers and subtitles will be added to the game at a later date via a free update, suggesting a Western publisher has already been picked up for the game's release. So some people were kind of worried that maybe this game is going to take like a year or take multiple, multiple months to come out. Seems like everything's already in the works here. Now, Monarch, once again, is planned for release on the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch, but apparently on the website for the game, it shows Valve Steam copyright. So while there's no logo, it does seem like it's going to be coming to Steam at some point. Now let's get into the game itself because this is what's most interesting about this game, the style. It's like a blend of like Code Vein, Shin Megami Tensei, and Persona mixed in with its own kind of unique battle system. So here's the story part. You suddenly awaken in Shin Mikado Academy. Before you is a barrier separating the campus from the rest of the outside world. Within the academy grounds are the madness-inducing mist, cryptic phone calls that connect to the other world, and seven pack bearers, each with their own demonic power ruled by their egos. To resist the irrationality surrounding you, you acquire authority of vanity, a demonic power that subsists off your ego and madness. You and your four companions then establish the true student council with you as their vice president. Together, you fight to return the academy back to normality. At Shin Mikado Academy, you'll befriend and fight alongside four companions who will lead you to four separate destinies. Whose hand will you ultimately take? Where will their path lead you? How will these four fates converge? Only you, the master of your own destiny, can find out. Here are the key features of the game. Wield your madness to your advantage. Activating the authority grants you the power in exchange for raising your Mad Gauge. When your Mad Gauge reaches max, you enter a state of madness, causing you to attack enemies and allies alike for several turns before self-destructing. Controlling the madness effectively can help turn the tide in battle. Fight back against the demonic forces. Control up to six characters in a turn-based free movement battle system, attack enemies from behind and resonate with surrounding allies to perform combo attacks, situational awareness and calculated decision making are the keys to victory. Explore the academy thrown into disarray. Within the mist are phone calls that connect you to the other world. You must explore every inch of the mist to resolve the mysterious abnormalities plaguing the academy. Seven axis points map out your desires. Pride, wrath, envy, lust, greed, gluttony, sloth. Your affinity for each will change according to how you answer diagnostic tests you are given throughout the story. How your ego develops rests upon your own desires. Fiends and reflections of your ego. Fiends and demons that answer only to you. Different types can be unlocked for each of your seven desires. Strengthening your ego increases the range of cosmetic customization options for your fiends, as well as how much their equipment can be enhanced. So this is a very interesting, kind of complex, but at the same time, straightforward type of RPG. I like what they're trying to do with like the seven deadly sins and having it to where it can control the tide of battle. Now, based off of the trailer that I've seen, the gameplay doesn't look too like flashy or crazy at this point from what they've shown, but I'm interested in actually trying the game out myself and seeing how complex and how in-depth it is. It kind of has a little bit of a weird type of grid, but it's command-based. I mean, we'll see how it actually turns out once we get more gameplay of it, but so far, I'm definitely intrigued, especially with the story of the game and also the fact that it's former SMT developers and you can capture fiends and demons and have them work on your team. I like that style of gameplay, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more. So what are your thoughts so far on all the different topics here that we discussed today? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Check out the links in the description. We've got Twitter going to give us a follow on there. Stay up to date on all the latest gaming news and information. Also, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you can. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you for the next one. Peace.